We talked to Carrie about having a home funeral, which is keeping my body around for a day or two after I die so that people I love can come and be here in a very small, intimate group, just washing, you know, my body or anointing it with like essential oils maybe or putting flowers around it. The funeral industry is a multi-billion dollar business and Oftentimes, people think that that's the only option is to go to a funeral home for their death care needs. And so part of what I do is to let people know that you are the expert of your loved one. One of my pupils is larger than the other. And I had a feeling that would mean something, and it turns out that it did, that the cancer is now spread to my brain. So there are about 20 tumors in my brain. But I think that what's happening now that it's been three years, I am more able to um, be used to the idea of my own disappearance. Artist, teacher, and mother, Andrea Bird is dying. She's taking a few different approaches to dealing with her end of life, in part for herself and mostly for those around her. By sharing her story in front of the camera, she's hoping to spark more conversation around the taboos of death and dying. My husband, Daniel, carries most of it with me because day to day, you know, it's the two of us here. I try to imagine what it would be like for him by putting myself in his position. And sometimes the, the pain of that is just annihilating. Daniel and I met the first day of art college. And it was one of those moments that doesn't happen very often in life. As soon as I saw him, I knew I would love him in a room of 300 people, and I don't think that's ever happened to me before since all these 40 years we've been walking alongside each other in one capacity or one way or another. Now it's not a parallel path anymore. It's a branching path, and he's going to keep on living, and I'm not. So both of us have had to get used to that idea. This painting is called Will You Promise? And it's a painting that I did after the stage four diagnosis. Having stage four cancer means that you have a terminal illness. And even though the doctors won't say, this is a terminal illness, you know, this means you're gonna die. No one uses the D word, but that's really what it is. And that's what Daniel and I recognize right away, that that's what's, that's what's just happened. There's a lot of energy that went into this piece, you know, and scraping with my fingernails through the wax. And you can see here, I just took chunks of charcoal and um, pushed them into the wax and just let all that energy, that freneticness, go right into the piece. Red felt appropriate for the amount of energy that I had and the anger. Art has saved my life more times than I could possibly imagine in terms of helping me understand what's going on in my world. Andrea has been looking at several ways to cope with her death. She's delved deeply into poetry and has gone to death and dying workshops. Her other help has been a death doula. Carrie Sawatsky is helping Andrea and her friends and family plan her death care. Being a death doula is essentially companioning someone through such a pivotal time. So walking someone through the process, guiding them, providing them resources, just like you would as a midwife or a birth doula, a very similar experience. Certified death doulas give non-medical support for those nearing end of life. They can share options available for alternative burials, legacy projects, and explain end-of-life choices like palliative and hospice care. As some don't know what to expect, death doulas can also explain the signs of death, 
and discuss private topics like body preparation. Today I'm driving to Andrea's. We meet every month and every time we meet it's a little bit different. There's different concerns or fears that show up, different homework that she's accomplished. Maybe there's different stages of her planning that she's ready to focus on. Hi, darling. So I thought we could start by you telling me what's been showing up for you since our last meeting. Well, I was uh, telling you a little bit about the fear that was showing up. Learning to breathe through it is becoming really important. Yeah. We've asked for the forms for May to start that in case we need that as well. Mm -hmm. And how about your home funeral plans? Can we talk a little bit about how those are coming along and... Well, Liam's doing the, the backboard. We're gonna do a shroud. You mentioned a shroud earlier, so mm -hmm. maybe we'll be your first customer. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm trying to micromanage, you know, a party that I'm not going to be at. <laughs> <laughs> like, why am I doing that? Maybe and Jill, will be there as a fly on the wall. Maybe it's someone else swap me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just comforted knowing you're here, and it gives us confidence of getting through certain stages, just with a guide. It's good to have a guide, and you're a good guide. I want to add that it's a real honor to be a part of this with you. It's become this taboo subject. It's seen as a bit morbid to even think about or talk about death. Death is absolutely natural and 100% of us will die. And if we can keep present to we will all die and how do we want to die, having some, some choice around that if it's an expected death and if it's an unexpected death, we still can have these conversations about what do we want to have happen to our bodies? What's important to us? How do I want to leave a legacy? Instead of just outsourcing our death care to quote unquote professionals, and bringing meaning back into it. I find it so equivalent to birth, it's but the other extreme. You enter the world and you exit the world, and why is one and a blessed so event and the other is feared and it's strange. to just treat death and dying as an ordinary thing. It is. It happens every day to hundreds of thousands of people. And maybe this time of COVID will shift that. It's heartbreaking, yes. And it's sad. All of that is still true and we can still be straight up about it and not, not tiptoe around it. Sometimes people haven't worked through their grief, and sometimes grief is just very present for them or raw. So there can be a lot of feelings that show up talking about death. It is heartbreaking. It's hard to leave this place. This earth, you know, this planet, <laughs> this life. 